goal is to create safe spaces for kids to have artistic and athletic places to explore and play. You know, when you really get into it, Philly is a city full of neighborhoods. It's a diverse city, a city full of hardworking people. A park should be a place that, you know, where you see joy every single day. And that's what we're trying to do. And I used to ride my bike uh, to the NovaCare facility in South Philly. And I used to ride by Ralph Brooks Park, you know, every day when I went down to work. It just pulled on me. It was a, it was a small playground with two wooden basketball hoops, holes in, in the basketball court that used to be clearly a former parking lot. But there was always a group of kids, you know, activating the space. And then there was the very powerful mural that, you know, nobody can miss. And I decided, you know, that was where you know, MTWB should start their work. It'll be forever known as the Top Notch. It's not a day that you go by that you won't see somebody utilizing that part. And it's been like that for as long as I can remember. It's important for everybody to come to the park, especially the older people, like the ones even older than me. Because we have history, and we could pass that history down. Just the storytelling is knowledge. Like everybody has a story. I'm not a football fan. <laughs> I got to know him before I got to know who he was. And I didn't know how the project was going to end, where it impacted me like it has, but they never lost patience with us. Actually helping not just this community, but communities across the city thrive again. A park is, is a safe place, it's a community center. It's a place where a neighborhood can come together. It's a place where kids can grow and develop. It's a place where people can, can meet and hang out and relax. What we've learned is not only to, you know, design any kind of public space with the neighborhood, because they are truly kind of the experts of their space, but you want to design something that works for everybody. Jeff. Uh, had a foundation called Urban Roots and he had been doing some mentoring in that neighborhood for a number of years and he'd been working with the youth and some leaders. Fast forward, our foundations have merged and we met Claire because doing stuff on public land is pretty complicated. So if you actually want to see this thing happen, you need to bring in Claire Labor. When I seen what they did, the 20 Fantasca, I was like, wow. And when it happened to us, I was more wild. Any park needs people. This park is special. We have many kids come through here. The neighborhood is changing, different cultures are coming in, so you adapt to all that. And this is what the Smith Playground is all about. We adapt. We want just to not be a male ordinary playground, we want it to be a female ordinary playground. It's beautiful, man. I mean, you can just spend a day here, the kids play. We have our bad times, but the most times it's good. It's all good, man. You know what I mean? As I got a phrase to say, it's all good in the hood. My name's Edmund Desmore. Uh, I like to consider myself a Waterloo resident. The neighborhood's been through its ups and downs. We're pretty much in the heart of that opioid epidemic. This is sacred ground, like we don't want it in here. We want people here, but we don't want the addiction here. We want people here, but we don't want the violence here. We want the laughs, we want the hugs, we want the smiles. We want uh, children to be children. You hear basketballs, you hear splash, and, uh, you hear kids playing tag and running around. And this is what it's supposed to be. The people have been through so much as far as from trauma to feeling neglected or not feeling recognized, and what's special is that Waterloo is getting some attention now. People are giving it the attention that it rightfully deserves, you know, and people are feeling loved. The young folks saying, we're on the map now. Waterloo's on the map. They feel as though they exist. Well, my name is Mike Carter. I'm the team director here all year long, and in the summertime, I'm the team camp director. 
I think the thing that makes Bear special is that we become a family over time. We have became a family. So this is not just a, a, a recreation center to a lot of people, it's home. I'm so glad that I, I was able to touch some of the teens' lives and make a difference in their lives. You know, when you come from different neighborhoods, sometimes your future is not promised. So if I'm able to give somebody the opportunity or set a platform for a kid to want to do better in their life, it makes me feel great as a man at their recreation center. My name is Kristen Smirker. Um, I run a uh, gymnastics program at VAIR. I've been doing it for 21 years. Make the world better. They're a great group, bunch of people. I think that they're here for a great purpose and they're here to capture moments from now until actually something happens at VAIR and we get all fixed up. VAIR kickoff went awesome. We had a lot, big turnout, a lot of kids, a lot of adults. It kind of gave people and community the opportunity to kind of see what's happening and what's going to happen. We're all excited and everybody's excited. It's a great kickoff. You know, I love music and I love sports and I thought, you know, we could bring them together uh, to do something good with MTWB and the concert has turned into our big fundraiser every year uh, to support our work. I first learned about uh, Make the World Better through Connor, who at that point, there, you know, there was all these stories and word was out in the street that there's a Philadelphia Eagle guy going to concerts uh, and going to pretty weird concerts, like, you know, ones that you typically wouldn't expect a football player to be at. And I tweeted at him sort of as a joke that, hey, free shows for life. Just, just let us know whenever you want to go to a show. Like, haha, like, you know, just kidding around. He wrote back over, you know, DMs and started talking. And we eventually met up and got lunch. And he had this idea where he wanted to sort of combine the world of, you know, Philadelphia Eagles professional sports and his love of music into a benefit show, which would raise money. I used to go to a ton of shows. I still go to a ton of shows at UT. And I asked him about having a concert there, and he was like, let's do it. Uh, and we did our first three shows there. The foundation has grown as the parks have grown. Now we're at the beautiful Dell, which is a, you know, a city venue um, where we get a great deal here so we can raise as much money as possible. And again, this, this is the way you know, we support the organization. We go out and leverage the funds raised at this concert uh, through the public and private sector to help pay for these projects.